Hello and welcome to the first part of the tutorial. First, please make sure that you have Blender 3.6 installed because I'm not sure if it works exactly the same way on older versions and there were also a lot of performance improvements in this version. So yes, please update first. And in this chapter, we make our foreground with the procedural path. And for that, we first have to add an plane, then scale it up like a hundred times and apply the scale. And now normally if we want to change the geometry of the plane, we would first have to go into the edit mode and then subdivide it like a hundred times. And now we could go to or we could activate the proportional editing and then make our bumps and hills or whatever. But in this case, we want to make all bumps and hills fully procedural. And we will also do the subdivisions directly in the geometry nodes. So it has the advantage that we can change the amount of subdivisions later if we want. All right, so we go back and now we open another window and select the geometry node editor. And new. All right, um, the first thing you will see is the group input and group output if you make a new geometry node system. Before we start, I just wanted to say that we will use very much nodes and it's totally fine if you don't understand every single node here because it's more about building us a system that works and where you know what values you have to change to get the look you want and also to have a good base which you can reuse for other landscapes also. So yeah, don't be intimidated by that. First a little tip, we can make our life much easier if we just assign a shortcut for the search field. So just press Shift A, then right click on the search field and assign shortcut. Um, I normally use Control Shift and A for that. And here you can see the assigned shortcut. The first uh, node we need is a set position node. We put it in between and we will need a lot of space here. We need a vector math node. Then we need a position node, connect the position to the vector and the vector to the position. Then we need a math node, set it to multiply, duplicate it with shift D. And now we also need a Combine XYZ node, duplicate this node too. Then we connect the value to Z and also this value to Z. And now we have to connect the vector to this vector. And this vector we have to connect to the offset. All right. Mm -hmm. Now we need a noise texture for the bumps. And then also a color ramp. And another math node. We also set it to multiply. We connect the color to the upper value. And we connect the value to 
the upper value of this multiply node. And we also connect it to the uh, value of this multiply node. And then the noise texture. Um, here we have to connect the factor to the upper value of this multiply node. Um, we also have to flip the color ramp so that the uh, white color is on the left and the black color on the right side. Okay. Then we need another set position node also we need a capture attribute node then we need a vector math node we set it to subtract and we connect the vector to their position and the geometry to their geometry. And here we connect this geometry to this geometry. All right. Um, now we need another position node. Then another combine XYZ node. We connect the vector to the vector, the position to the vector, and yes, all right. Then we need another math node. Uh, set it to multiply. Um, another color ramp. We also have to flip the colors here. Then we connect um, here the color to the value. And here we connect the value to and this value and to the Z of the combine XYZ. All right, then we need another math node, set it also to multiply. And we connect the value to the factor. Then we need a geometry proximity node. We connect the distance to the value. And a curve to mesh node. And we connected um, the mesh to the target. Um, yes, and an object info node. Here we connect also the geometry to the curve. All right. Uh, don't wonder the plane is gone because the group import isn't connected anymore at the moment, but it's no problem. Um, all right. But now we can uh, connect. Ah, ah, yes. We can we can connect the geometry to the capture attribute again, and so here we have our um, plane. So um, now we have to add a subdivide mesh node put it in between and here we can subdivide easily our plane without going into the um, uh, edit mode. All right, then um, 
I guess we also have to connect the attribute from the capture attribute to the uh, socket of the group output and also we have to connect it with the factor of the color ramp all right and now you can see some bumps here already and then we only have to connect the attribute of the capture attribute to the input socket of the group output and to the factor of the color ramp and now if we go to the vertex group we uh, add a new vertex group call it path then we go to the modifiers output attributes and select our path all right and now i think we can add our curve um bezier curve which um we will use for the path so it's a very good way to make an easy path that you can easily change every time and for that we scale it up first a hundred times like the plane um, we make it a bit higher then we go to our plane and we have to set this to relative and the geometry proximity to edges i guess and we select our curve and yeah here you can see uh, how the curve affects the plane and we get our cool path so um yeah we can make the noise um a bit bigger like that and all right this already looks not bad now it's time for some fine tuning and to make everything a bit more tidy so for that we first go near to the path and as you can see we can now control with the sliders of the color ramp uh, how deep and how smooth the path is and in my case for the white value i used 0.4 and for the black value 0.68 for example and here we set the black value to something like 0.5 all right um, and now we change the name also of the modifier to something like terrain and we also want to have the ability to change some values directly in the modifier tab so that we don't have to go every time into the geometry nodes if we want to change uh, something. And for that, we just have to connect all values we want with the group import. So for example, the subdivide mesh node, we connect here. Then we press N. Um, here we go to groups and level. And for the name, I would say we call it subdivision level. All right, what do we want to connect also? I would say, uh, of course, this value. This is for the um width of the path so we connect it here um and we call it um path width and here also this multiply node which is for the death death i don't know how to say it in english 
uh, how deep um, uh, it is. So we connect it also here to the group import and yes, dev call it path uh, dev. So um, all right, I think this is pretty good. Now we also want to group some nodes and for that we just select everything we want and then we press Ctrl and G and here we have our group and with tab we can go out and here we press F2, rename it to, I don't know, proximity displacer then uh, we also want here to group these nodes for the Z displacement so we press Control G again tab to go out and press F2 and call it Z displacement um yep all right that looks a little bit better already and a little bit more tidy so um we have only one noise texture to now for our small bumps of the terrain and it works quite well, but we also want to have huge hills and they should also be fully procedural generated too. And to make this, it's quite easy. We just have to duplicate our nodes and then have to change the scale of the noise texture and the multiply values a bit. So just select these three nodes then press shift D to duplicate and also duplicate the Z displacement node, put it here in between. And now we connect the effector of the noise texture to this value and the multiply value to the upper value like this um, all right now we uh, set the scale to something like 0 0.02 and increase the value of the multiply node and also for the second color ramp, we have to set the black color to one. And as you can see, it seems to work. But the problem is, um, the more we increase the values, the more the plane uh, will go up. And of course we don't want that. So what we can do here, we go into the Z displacement group and we set this multiply value to a minus 0.5 and yes tab to go out it's linked so it's changed on both groups um all right and now if we change the values the plane stays where it was before And now we um, add a second little geometry nodes modifier to bend the two ends of the plane a little bit down so that we can see the actual end of the path, especially if we want to make a fence later, then it would be quite problematic if we see the end of the fence. So uh, first we... Uh, Add a new geometry nodes modifier. We click on new. 
and we start with a set position node put it in between then we need a vector rotate node all right we connect the vector to the position um yes then we need a switch node set it to vector we connect the output to the axis then we need also a map range node um a compare node a math node which we set to absolute i guess and another math node which we set to um to radians uh, yes then a separate x y z and a position node well and now we connect the position to the vector the x to a of the greater than uh, node uh, yes then also to the value of the absolute node then we connect this value to the value of the uh, map range node then radians um all right here we have the group input um we will also connect the degrees to the group input so that we can control it in the modifier later um all right then we connect the value of the radians to the max then Mm, we have this greater than node we connect the result to the switch and here we would have to set it to minus one all right then uh, we connect the result of the map range node to the angle of the vector rotate all right and now we change the values of the map range node um from min to something like 80 and from max to something like 160 and we connect also the position node to the vector input all right um okay now if we change the values here you can see it's bending down but only on the one side okay all right you also have to change this value to one to affect both sides and you can control how much of the plane is affected by the band with the from min and from max settings so for example here we can affect more um, I set this back to 80 and here you can control how smooth it is um, I think 10 degrees should be enough and uh, now we also rename the modifier to something like bending and the path uh, death i would say we set you 0.4 and the path with ah this is interesting um 
maybe this problem was caused by grouping the nodes. Um, here we have a value which is uh, for the dev. So this is, and this is for the width. Um, all right, we just uh, switch them. And we press N, then we go into the groups. Here it is, we rename to width. And this value we rename to path def. All right, and now Yes, now it's correct. So you can change it to whatever you want. I set it to 0.4. And this already looks pretty great. Of course, we could now also connect some values of the noise texture or of the multiply value to the group input to control it directly in the geometry nodes modifier. But in this case, it wouldn't make so much sense because um, that are too much. So I would just select them and press Ctrl J to frame it, then press F2. And this is for the uh, hills. All right. And then Ctrl J again. F2 and this we name bumps and put it here down. Yeah, so at least it's a bit more tidy and you know where you have to change the values. But yeah, I prefer the frames in this case, but um, of course you could also connect it um, to the group input and rename it. I would say now it's time to texture our terrain because the problem is we now have our geometry but we don't have any texture supplied and for that we would have to go here to the shader editor then say new, we rename it to terrain and now we have to download um, two texture packs, one for the path and one for the forest ground or normal ground. And one of the best resources for free textures is Poly Heaven. So here we go to textures and then terrain. And for the path, I guess I would uh, take this texture for case more than enough. Download, all right. And for the normal ground, we take this texture. Of course, you can take whatever you want. Back to Blender, please make sure that you have activated the Node Wrangler add on. It's under edit preferences and here node wrangler because uh, with this add-on we can just select the principled bscf and press Control shift and t and then first we select our normal ground all right we scale it up like 20 times. Yes. And then we duplicate the principled BSDF and control shift T again. Um, here we select the path textures. 
All right. Okay, and now we would need a color, a mix color node and set it to color burn. Then we need a color ramp. And an attribute node. Yep. Then we connect the color to the factor and here the color to A. Maybe the factor we set a little bit higher. Six, eight. Um, here the color ramp we would have to set lower point two two something like that. Um, for the attribute uh, name we have to uh, write the name we uh, uh, choose here in the vertex group. Um, so it's path. Then we also need a mix shader. Mm -hmm. Mix shader. All right. Then we connect the two principal BSDFs. Here we also have to scale it up. Um. All right, and then we have to connect the result with the factor and we get nothing because we first have to go to the geometry node editor again, then press N and in the outputs we have to change the um the type of the attribute uh, from float to color i guess and yes here it is very nice we go back to our shader editor all right and for the displacement, I would only take the displacement from the path and not from the normal ground because we will scatter grass and so on uh, anyways uh, on the normal ground. So it's not necessary. Um, that's why we delete this and we connect the displacement from the path to the displacement input of the material output. And now it should work fine. Before we start with the next chapter, I want to tweak the landscape and the path a little bit. So um, firstly, I want to make the hills bigger. For that, I go to the geometry node editor again, hills, and I would double that. So like 30 is good. We can go to solid mode for now. Here we can see it better. Um, now for the curve. Um, uh, for now, if we go to the edit mode, we only have two control points and they are pretty big. So I would now scale it down again to something like 10 then go in the edit mode and if we go into the orthographic view we can select a control point and with e we extrude it and rotate it a bit so that we have more control points. Yep. 
Yep. I think that's fine for now. If we look, yeah. But one problem, if we go out of the edit mode, um, here we can see that the curve is um, not always over the ground and that uh, causes a problem. So we have to make sure that the curve is always over the ground. So we make it one meter higher and make it in the middle. Yep. And another problem can be if the curve isn't smooth enough, especially for the car we will animate later. Um, for that, it's very easy. You can just go into the edit mode again, then press A to select all and right click, subdivide and then subdivide it two times or something like that. And now it should be fine. But um, the problem is also if we go too high with the curve, as you can see that the uh, path isn't deep enough anymore because it depends on how close the curve is to the ground. Um, so for that, we just can select our landscape again and increase the values a bit. Mm. Ah. All right, you just have to look that you make the number of the path width not too big because zero is everything. And if we increase it, the path will be smaller. So um, for our car, I guess, 0.15 will be good and not that deep, just a little 0.75. Yeah, I guess that's not bad. Uh, one little thing, I recorded this afterwards and I just wanted to say to you that you can of course change the noise texture also to for the, for the bumps and also for the hills so that you have even more control over everything. Uh, we will proceed with uh, 3D because I forgot to change it, but yeah, here you know. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next chapter.